thank you for all the well wishes and it's a really hard time but uh, you've been very supportive and I appreciate that uh, at this time if you could mute yourself and uh, leave yourself muted if you would if not we'll do that for you but uh, this time we're going to hope go ahead and play a, a picture uh, presentation so let's do that this time My mother yeah. has disappeared. Yeah. Mother. Oh, well, Jeremy's doing it. Mm -hmm. Music. That's you. That's you. <laughs> you. So handsome man.
with um, Manson's oh. brother Ethan. <laughs> Christy? Yeah. Oh, there's Liv. Look at that. Look at that. I was right there. <laughs> they cut me out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's funny. He probably looked at me. Aww. Look at me. I know. How did nobody know? <laughs> I'm just about to be involved, you guys. I'm scared. Oh, we're going to what? Bethel? <laughs> it's the same goddamn back. Got my hair. <laughs> That's my arm. <laughs> I'm cut out of the picture. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
think that's the first time I met him, actually. Yeah, my uncle's here. I'm gonna be in the reflection of this. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh my god. Oh There's... my god, two of them? Yeah. Holy cow. Oh, she's yeah. so cute. I'm not, I was with them before. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 Into a puzzle. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> That's such a good one. This must have been a little bit of a pass. Oh, come on. Come on. Christy's wedding shoes. <laughs> Remember that day? I was dating your dad. No, I was dating Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Wasn't you? No, I was dating him. Really? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. He looks drunk and everything. Yeah. here today. It's the memorial for our brother Elvin Gray, a deeply loved member of the Christian congregation. Elvin was born December 17th, 1949, and he died October 17th, 2020. It was on May 18th, 1974, yeah. that he married um, Connie Nicholson. Yeah, Natalie and Lydia. And he survived by his wife, Connie his son Jason, and his daughter Amanda. That's it. He's also survived by his seven brothers, no. Bill, Denver, Raymond, Ronnie, Melvin, mm -hmm. Carl Wayne, and Tommy, as well as his three sisters, Ollie, Aline, and Nadine, nine grandchildren, and eight grand great-grandchildren. Now, Elvin does have a twin brother, Melvin, and he likes talking about that and telling stories about their growing up. But being a twin, Elvin also likes to point out the fact that he was five minutes older. Now, that's a true brother for you, that's even really now, brother. trying to mm -hmm. get the last word. Yeah, As we all know, Elvin's a storyteller. Whether it's stories about 
growing up, his growing up, or his work, or his many, many years in the ministry, different Kingdom Hall projects that he was a part of. Elvin loves to tell stories. And as his family and his friends have been uh, reminiscing over the last week, um, they've been reminiscing. Something dawned on them that they really never quite realized over the years as they've been sharing memories. Uh, they realized, and it occurred to them, that there's a couple of phrases that Elvin used a, a lot, actually. He would say, you know, the thing of it is, or now, the fact of the matter is. Now, if you know Elvin well, or if you've talked at length with, with, uh, with him at, at, any, at any point, you're probably smiling right now. Because you probably just realized, too, that you've heard him use those phrases countless times in conversation. But there's something else that defined Elvin, the Elvin that we know and love. And that happened on July 11th, 1974, when he was baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, Elvin grew to adulthood during, as we probably can imagine, a turbulent time period in history in the late 1960s. He was in, on into the 1970s, uh, but he was in the army uh, in Vietnam. Now you can just imagine uh, the effect that this would have on a young man. But it was long, not, wasn't long after that uh, that he heard a message of hope, a message of peace, uh, that of love of neighbor, love of God. And it was in deep contrast he just wanted to, marry your grandma. to what he, he had seen and heard still seeing here today. It started him on a life, a lifelong transformation into a servant pleasing to Jehovah. Let's ask ourselves a question. It's a serious question we, we do well to reflect on. Why are we here today? Why did we come together uh, as a group like this? There's several reasons really. To comfort and support the family. And for that, they're deeply appreciative. But in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells us of another reason. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, and verse 1. Now, as we read that, the first half of that verse is easily understood. But the second part is going to need some explaining. So let's read that. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 1 tells us, a good name is better than a good all. Oh. And the day of death is better than the day of birth. And we appreciate the value of a good name and a good reputation. And after all of these years, we know Elvin, and we appreciate his good name and his good reputation. We'll talk about that a bit more as we go on. But that second part about the day of death being better than the day of birth, how can that possibly be? Well, let's let the Bible explain the Bible. In a discussion on the resurrection, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 22. Jesus was talking about the resurrection. He was quoting something his father said. Yeah. Here in Matthew chapter 22, in verses 31 and 32, notice what Jesus, in his, Jesus said. Yeah. He said, regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was oh, spoken to you by God, who said, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is the God, not of the dead, the but of the living. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that's being said here. Notice he mentioned Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. Well, let's focus on Abraham for just a moment. Most of us are probably familiar with Abraham. We know that he was a good man. He was an outstanding man. He had a very good name, a good reputation. Oh, but at dead. this point, Abraham had been dead for over 1,800 years. But Jesus is, again, he's talking about the resurrection, but he's quoting his father, something his father had said. Now remember, Abraham is dead, but he didn't say, Jehovah said, I was the God of Abraham, past tense. He said, I am the God of Abraham, present tense. I wonder what his family thinks. Why would Jehovah say that? Well, the, the verse answers that. He said, no, 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 Marie, he is the God of the living. Mm -mm. Death has no power over Jehovah God. That's how he views all of his faithful servants who have died. They are all living to him. So today, 
We grieve this loss with Connie, dad's best friend. Jason, mm-hmm. and Mandy, and all of the family. We grieve deeply. But we grieve with hope. And that's because of Jehovah. It's because of Jehovah that we can still think about when in the present tense. That's the living God that we worship. Amanda has kids. But why do we find ourselves in this situation? How did things come to be this way? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Because everything in life <clears throat> is natural. It seems um, there's a, every, when you're born, you grow up, everything seems to take a natural progression. Everything that is except for death. Death is unnatural. That's why there's so much of pain that, that comes with death. There's a reason for that. Death was not a part of God's original purpose for mankind. We weren't supposed to die. Adam and Eve, and by extension, all of their offspring, were created to live forever in a paradise here on the earth. Reading from the Bible. Then something happened. Something terrible happened. The devil told them that they wouldn't die. They disobeyed God. That was a lie. The devil knew, Satan knew that they would die. He knew that they could, he couldn't keep them alive. What other funeral involves Satan Adam knew in there? that the devil was lying. Mm-hmm. Eulogy. The results of that lie yeah. was tragic. Yeah. Here in Romans, the fifth chapter, it very clearly outlines what happened as a result of that lie and that disobedience. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, we're told that is why, just as through one down. man, Adam, <sighs> sin entered into okay. the world. Oh, would you like and to do death it? through huh? sin. Okay, what would they like us to do? And so death <laughs> spread to all men because they had all sinned. Well, because they probably, this is copy and paste from my break, everybody else. Adam, like, through they said this disobedience, sentenced the all of his offspring, that was at my every head. human after him that ever lived, the entire human race, including us, to pain, sickness, old age, and eventually death. There was no hope. There was no way out of this. Every every human that came after that was going to die. And this was going the way it was going to be from now on. None of us had any hope uh, of, of anything, ever. But Jehovah intervened. He made a way out. Jesus explained this in his own words in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, where he told us, just as the Son of Man, the Son of Man being Jesus, just as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered to, <laughs> but to minister, and to give his life as a ransom and exchange Man-slaining. for many. Jesus. Bible splitting. Now we've talked about Jehovah and what he's done for us. Now let's talk about Jesus and what he means to us. Well, first, as the scripture states, he gave his life for everyone. And while he gave it for everyone, After that, it's up to us. Any that choose to follow after him could take advantage of that ransom, opening up the possibility of everlasting life. If what Adam did was the supreme act of selfishness, then what Jesus did was the supreme act of love. So then Jesus should have a vital role in every one of our lives. And then when it comes to the resurrection, Jehovah has given him a critical role but before we get into that let's clear something else up what happens when someone dies more specifically and more pointedly where is Elvin right now what happened to Elvin because we love him we want to know there's lots of ideas there's lots of stories and there's lots of theories none of that matters the only thing that matters (laughs) is the truth what is Jehovah's happens when he dies? And he tells us, he's not going to leave us in the dark. He loves us. He wants us to know. And he tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, and verse 5, he tells us what happens when we die. He says, for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing at all, nor do they have any more reward, because the, all memory of them is forgotten. So when the, when you die, 
everything ends. It says they know nothing at all. All conscience thought, everything conscience ends. Verse 10 goes on, whatever your hand finds conscience, to do, do with conscience. all your mind. For there is no work, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you are going. Again, it just furthers up the thought. Everything ends. Elvin knew this, and he believed it. Now, Elvin didn't expect to die, but he also didn't expect or want anything else. He knew that this, this was a possibility. The truth contained here in the book of Ecclesiastes is very comforting. How they're all dressed up. Why can we say that? Why would this be comforting to someone? Mm -hmm. Well, again, we're going to let the Bible explain the Bible. In the book of John, chapter 11, we're going to talk about a a, a very Mm -hmm. hopeful and comforting insight of the life of Jesus and his friend Lazarus. Many of us have probably heard of Lazarus. Misuse, I mean. Jesus and his apostles and some of his disciples had been journeying. And here in John chapter 11, verse 11, he made an interesting statement. He said, Lazarus, our friend, has fallen asleep, but I am traveling there to awaken him. Now, the disciples didn't really get the point of what Jesus was saying. If we were there, we wouldn't have gotten the point of what Jesus was saying. Nothing about it. They took Jesus literally. They assumed that Lazarus was literally asleep. Yep, they always do. But Jesus was trying to teach them something. Jesus is trying to teach us something something very important. Just tell funny stories. So he told them life, what had life. happened really. No, Lazarus did for two minutes. Gone. Now it's about Jehovah. I noticed that Jesus first said that Lazarus All he said was, was, was that asleep. he uses common phrases. Now if you're asleep, was like, you can wake up. Mention you guys. Someone can wake you up. You probably didn't want to. This is the simple truth that Lazarus, that Jesus is teaching here by saying that death and comparing death to sleeping. Now, as they were approaching where Lazarus had been buried, Martha, Lazarus' sister, came out to meet Jesus. Notice her faith here in this exchange with Jesus as they go on in verse 23. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Now, in the Bible, there are many, I guess what you would call landmark moments, where something very, very important is said or done. This is one of those moments that's going to happen next. Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who exercises faith in me, Mm -hmm. even though he dies, will come to life. And everyone who is living and exercises faith in me will never die at all. Imagine if you were the one in front of Jesus when he said that. And Jesus asked a question. I'd hope you'd have better Do you glasses. believe this? Martha believed it. Elvin believed it. Do you believe this? Oh, I forgot we were here Yeah. Okay. Now, we all know from this account that Jesus went ahead and resurrected Lazarus. He brought him back to life after he had died. That's remarkable all in its own, all by itself. That's remarkable. But there's something else that happened here that was very remarkable. And that's found, let's start reading here again in verse 33. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he groaned within himself and became troubled. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus gave way to tears. Now think about that. Jesus is getting ready to perform a miracle. He knows that he's getting ready to resurrect Lazarus. But what's striking here is Jesus' response. He gave way to tears. Why? He was touched by the heartache that was all around him. This meant something to Jesus. This wasn't just something on a list of things to do for Jesus to do that day. Now let's put this in a little bit of perspective. This was God's own son, the most important. The, the greatest man who ever lived. He had a lot of important things that he was in the middle of doing. The most important thing that was ever done here on the earth. And he had a lot on his mind. I mean, there was just a lot. Think about this was Jesus. But Jesus loved them. He loved Lazarus. He was personally affected by what was going on here. I bring that down to us today. And 
that the Bible promises. Jesus is now a powerful, reigning mm-hmm. king, but he still deeply loves us. So it's only fitting that he is the one that Jehovah has chosen for a special privilege. For thousands of years, Jesus has watched his friends that he loves live and die, yeah. waiting for a resurrection. Now Elvin is among that number, and he's in good company. At John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, Jesus gives us a small glimpse of into a wonderful, amazing thing to look forward to in the future. For he tells us, Do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice and come out. Those who did good things to a resurrection of life and those who practiced vile things to a resurrection of judgment. The resurrection of the dead. That privilege has, this privilege has been given to Jesus. Those in the memorial tombs will hear a voice. They'll hear Jesus' voice telling them to wake up. Because we know, and because we believe what Jesus said, we know that this will happen. Now, we would rather have our dead loved ones with us. But imagine that. Jesus' voice waking you up. Their next conscience thought will be a happy one. Conscious. Conscience thought. Conscious. 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 <clears throat> It'll be your next conscious thought. <laughs> no, no, I'm and aware. He's think about wrong. how much Jesus loves us. Think about, think about Elvin and what Jesus saw in Elvin. There's lots of good things to see. Now, but we're going to talk about just a couple. Melvin loved the ministry. He was active. He was regular. He was engaged in the ministry. He loved talking to people about his God, Jehovah. That's your life's work. Elvin loved people, too. There was another thing about Elvin. Not just in word, but in action. That's why he was so engaged in the ministry. He loved people. But also, in other ways. Did you need help? Did you need help working on your house? Did you need help working on your roof? Did you need help working on your car? Did you just need to talk to somebody? Did you need help working on the kingdom hall? Was there a building project going on? Elvin was there. You know, that's one of the first, I think the first place I ran across Elvin was, was the building projects. I thought that's what he did for a living, he was a bricklayer. I didn't know he wasn't a bricklayer. We're all in the brick crew that's together. That's what he was asked to do. So that's <laughs> what he learned, learned, to live it, learned to do it. Now, for many of the brothers, the brothers that are listening here this, this afternoon, but Evan didn't need to be asked to help. He saw a need, and he did it without being asked. That's who he was. And he, he didn't need credit. He never said, I did this. He was very quiet, very humble. And there was a family member, a neighbor, That's not a friend, the kingdom hall, the congregation. That's what Evan was known for. That's why we've been asked. But Jesus saw all of this. You think maybe Jesus loved him? But today, for us, it still hurts, doesn't it? We can't escape that reality for now. But Jehovah and Jesus are there for us. They've given us a congregation. They've given us a worldwide brotherhood that is that are behind us. Jehovah has given us his word, the Bible. He gave us his son so we might have a hope for the future. A great Unless personal you decide cost. not to. Then. Jesus no, gave his okay. life for us. Is there any doubt that they love us or what they've done for us? Do you know when people love you that much and do that yeah, much I'm for you? <laughs> it's only natural to be drawn to them and want to be with them, to love them, and to want a relationship with them. It's only natural. So when we take time to reflect on that, it deepens our love and appreciation for them. So at times like this, when the reality of death strikes us very, very hard, it makes us think about how we were using our life. The 90th Psalm in verse 12, we can almost pray what those words are. Teach us how to count our days so that we may acquire a heart of wisdom. Think about how Elvin lived his life. 
What would make him use his life to make proclaiming Jehovah's oh, name so a priority? How is he able to live a simple, quiet, humble life in service to others? That was because of his relationship with his father, Jehovah. Not it really is that grandkids simple. grandkids or anybody else. So take occasions like this to heart. Maybe, or his actual Think about your life. Family. Think about how you are using it. Where is it going? You just use people. Jehovah loves you. He wants you, as one of his servants, to live forever. Or else. We can't earn. Oh, you're grieving? Yet. And you're we can't earn anything by our works. But we can show that Jehovah, that we love him, by our love and appreciation for him. And make a good name with him, by the he way. He such a great job. I what nice he would have gotten some of That's the way that helped him. They're probably all like, and because we know the truth. She'll realize. And because we believe what Jesus said. <laughs> so cannot we have comfort. Authentic self. And we have hope. And while all that's happening, and while all that is going on, we're just waiting patiently for the time that the bright future that Job has promised is finally here. If I know anything, that kid is zoned in the hell out. In conclusion, the family has chosen conclusion. a song for us to sing. Like 20 minutes. So let us sing. No. 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 Song number no. 150. No. I'm going to sing it. <laughs> Do you know? Can you unmute me? No. <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Aw. It's just sad that Jeremy's doing that. I think this is what they played at my dad's funeral all time. So. Trigger warning. <laughs> Horrible music. But everybody's muted. <laughs> so we just hear our commentary. This is like a bad science theater. You can't even cry if you're laughing at the ridiculous Because yeah, none of it was about him. <laughs> Jesus Christ.
Jeremiah's like, is this done? Mm -hmm. Brother Luther Murray will conclude his prayer, and then we will have a short video in conclusion. A video of what? The slideshow again? Jehovah, our Heavenly Father and Life Giver, we thank you so Zombies, much that you Zombies. have provided life for us, and we thank you very much that we have friends that uh, love Brother Gray, his family, and the congregation, and we know Brother Gray loved life too. It's obvious from our pictures that we saw and so many viewing uh, this memorial occasion that uh, he loved he loved people, he loved his family, he loved the congregation, and he loved people in general. And what a humble attitude he had toward uh, people and, and conversations with them and, and actions all showed that he really did love people. And so he really did mirror you, Jehovah, and your son, who love people also. And you have shown that through the many centuries the way that you have dealt with mankind. You have shown your love to them, uh, trying to encourage them as much as possible to look forward to a wonderful hope for the future. And this hope is not some fairy tale, but it's something that is guaranteed because you gave your most precious gift, your son, in our behalf as a ransom so that we might have life and uh, have it in abundance, everlasting life. So we know, Jehovah, that uh, this is a sad time for all of us, and but we know that you also are affected by this. Whenever a human dies, especially one of your servants, we know that uh, it hurts your heart. <clears throat> you are crushed sometimes. When you, when you see these things, you are crushed because uh, it's another human life that has been lost. But uh, we know that also, just like your son, you have confidence and you will, absolutely, it's a guarantee that you will resurrect Brother Gray in the future. And uh, you will bring back him with all his memories bring back him with all and memories. all the things that you know about him will be included in that new the body that, that he will come lost. back here you know, on like the his earth. Entire family and and his as you resurrect him just as Jesus resurrected Lazarus. Perfect, you know, but in the meantime, him. it's uh, a sad occasion and we all grieve for the loss of Brother Gray, but we know that you will comfort those, his family and the congregation and all those who knew him. So we thank you, Jehovah, that you provide this comfort for us through your word, the Bible, and through your spirit. So may we as individuals, as family members, and as a congregation continue to support Sister Gray and her family and uh, children, grandchildren, and all those yes. associated with Brother Gray. Mm -hmm. And uh, please help us to appreciate that and Supported do all we life. can to <laughs> provide that comfort for That's Sister Gray right. especially. So Jehovah, we thank you very much for the information that was shared with us today and pray your Holy Spirit to uh, continue to be with uh, uh, your people and the families of the it's deceased really ones tired. like Brother yeah. Gray. Just and uh, we pray this and we know that we're that sinners and we could mm -hmm. face the same thing in the oh, future. So may our Enter faith in you generic be strong. Artwork. So we thank you, Jehovah, Hobby for Lobby. these things. We offer this prayer now in the name of your dear son, Christ Jesus. Amen. In Jesus Christ. Hell, Beelzebub. Was that a poodle or is it white? I think this is hair. Oh, you're stuck. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Oh no, no. You're kidding. Indoctrination 101. Shut you up. Can hear is this at the me? <laughs> this is what you could have, Bella. Is this a subtweet? <laughs> what? We're gonna have the bread in the new system? As the sun shines oh, did they die in, in the new Yeah, I think that's supposed to be the new system. You're welcoming. Wow. We're still going to have to wear dresses. This is a white <laughs> Yes, this earthly paradise. More affection. Is that out there? Yeah. Oh, they're both hella gay. There's a house down in the valley. 
and a house oh, high on the hill. There is this singing is the worst the thing I've ever seen. As the water flows and turns the mill. Wait, no, it's gonna be their kid. Oh my god. Barry? I guarantee it's they lost the baby. Was just around the corner. It's great to share with friends who care the things that we love. We still have to read the Bible in the head. But it's already, it's past Life is new. She can't read. There's the sound of happy voices. <laughs> her husband has to read to her because she's a dumb woman. Why does it look like that? Now you're calling to your loved ones. No, this is so fucked up. Is this supposed to be that? So it's going to be a little kid runs up. No, no, no. This is new system. Mm -hmm. For his tender loving care. Yes, the blessing is the JWA. He's 12. How does he have a kid? Yep. It's gonna be a little kid and running out. Every day oh, this is so fucked up. Jesus Christ. So that's their... They died as old people. And this is their kid that... No, I think their kid died. Oh. He's 12 and also gay. Is that Tiana? Is a world I Hey, Mom, I was resurrected. It's a Sorry I died to hear some flowers. It's a guarantee reality. And it's hard to get downhearted. Oh, I guess that was foreshadowing. I should have known. It's the day Jesus Christ, it's so for. fucked up. And it's just around the corner. You're welcome for getting you out of here. <laughs> Fuck. How does Jeremy think about this video? Oh. Oh. Look. Look. Dead. Yep. No feelings. Friends, we do look forward to that resurrection, don't we? We want to thank uh, Brother St. Corn and also Brother Murray. And you welcome Jason on behalf the of, new system who of Connie and the children. family. They, they say thank you for all the cards. Thank you for raising the pedophile support that raped my daughter. And all your friends continue to do for them. Oh, you're talking so, about it? Mm -hmm. And we appreciate That's your great. attendance okay. here today, too. So, uh, this time we're going to be going, going ahead and closing the memorial. But again, thank you for your attendance. Thank you for your attendance. We're going to count it as a meeting yeah. so that there's actual attendance. Should I try it for like one last